It was a brutal night for James MacArthur at Yankee Stadium, but I'm going to try to give you a little bit of insight into why they ran James MacArthur out there. That's coming up on Locked on Royals. You are Locked on Royals, your daily Kansas City Royals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are tuned into another edition of Locked On Royals and the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I'm your host, Jack Johnson, and you can find me on Twitter or X at Johnny J underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. You also can catch us on wherever you get your podcasts. That can be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Ron Odyssey, and we're on YouTube. Just be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. If you're a first-time listener and you want to know a little bit more about me and this show, I am based here in Kansas City. I work at Sports Radio 810 WHB, doing some hosting, some co-hosting, and a little bit of producing as well. But when it comes to this podcast, when you click on this link, you know that you're going to be getting 30 straight minutes of Royals baseball. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. Today's episode is basically going to recap what happened tonight at Yankee Stadium and also give a look toward the future and the bullpen options that they have right now, they could have coming soon. And the bullpen options, they're not willing to just bring up to Kansas City. So let's start things off with tonight. Um, a somewhat successful game through the first six innings. The Royals held a one-run lead. You had home runs from Hunter Renfro. Salvador Perez had his first four-hit game of the season. And you had something of, let's see a positive outlook if you could get through uh, maybe the seventh inning, which is when everything collapsed for the Royals. But if you got to the seventh inning, I think you could have turned things over to guys that you feel like could have gotten the last couple of outs because that would have meant you're not facing Aaron Judge, you're not facing Juan Soto because those guys were coming up in the seventh inning. So let's go back to that point in time. Let's go back to the sixth inning, what happened and why it happened. James MacArthur is brought in after Sam Long gets the fi- the first out, excuse me, of that seventh inning. It was a lefty-lefty matchup. He faces Verdugo, gets Verdugo to pop up to Bobby Witt Jr. So then you've got Glaber Torres coming up, Juan Soto and Aaron Judge. And James MacArthur trots in from the bullpen. And I understand that James MacArthur has kind of been the whipping boy for Royals fans this year. Not because he's been the worst bullpen arm. I don't believe that to be the case. And for me, I think it was the guy who pitched the ninth inning or the eighth inning, excuse me, and Chris Stratton. So Chris Stratton has been this team and still is this team's worst bullpen arm. James MacArthur, not so much. And James MacArthur had been pretty good since the end part of July. And we don't really remember those outings in which he wasn't pitching in a high leverage one run game and especially not one that was occurring at Yankee Stadium. So on the surface, I don't have an issue with going to James MacArthur. Uh, It was the seventh inning. I do not believe Lucas Ersig was available. He had pitched back-to-back days. So Sam Long gets that first out of the seventh inning, and then Macquatro goes to James MacArthur. And the reason Sam Long is not out there facing Glaber Torres and Juan Soto is that he was at 22 pitches. I mean, you got four outs from Sam Long. I kind of feel like he did his job. You you shouldn't be asking Sam Long to give you six outs in a one-run game at Yankee Stadium. You also want to make sure that he's potentially fresh for a few of these games if another situation comes about like that. So you don't have to go to somebody else who may not be the best option in a high leverage role. So to me, you know, Sam Long did enough there. And I know there are some people out there, some people that follow me that think, well, why are you trying to punt on games when these are important? These are absolutely important games. But It's not as simple as just burning guys out for one game to hope to hold on to a one-run lead. I do not believe that McIlroy tried to punt on this game. I think he liked the matchups that were going to be presented for the rest of the game. So Sam Long faces the lefty he needs to, and then it's righty, lefty, righty for James MacArthur, who had been really good, right, for the the better part of a month. And no, not all of them were high-leverage spots, but Lucas Ersig is not available. At least I believed he wasn't going to be available tonight. That's why you saw James MacArthur coming in in the seventh inning instead of John Schreiber. If Lucas Ersig 
was fully available and ready to go. Maybe he does come in in a spot like that because you're going to have to face Juan Soto and Aaron Judge. So to me, that felt like they were going to be saving John Schreiber for the ninth inning, a guy who has a little bit of closing experience this year, and you're probably playing matchups at that point. So if MacArthur is able to get Glaber Torres and Juan Soto, he did not. He didn't record a single out. It went single, walk, single, three-run home run. Right? I'm not trying to excuse everything because James MacArthur wasn't good tonight. He imploded. And a lot of his implosions this year have been in big games, have been in big spots. And he was this team's closer before Lucas Ursig got here. And he had blown a couple of games. But I also don't want to lose sight of the fact that there was a method to the madness why he was elected to go into the game. I know it's not the popular choice, but it's the cards they had. It's the cards they had in their deck. Right, So the thought is, okay, so if it's not James MacArthur, do you go John Schreiber in that spot? Well, that's fine. John Schreiber can come in and hopefully get Glaber Torres and Juan Soto. You still have to figure out the 8th and the ninth without Lucas Ursic, right? Do you trust John Schreiber to face then Aaron Judge, and then you'd have two lefties after that in Wells and then Jazz Chisholm? Okay, let's say instead of Schreiber going back out for the 8th, let's go with Bubich, right? Bubich to go in the 8th to face Aaron Judge. Austin Wells, Jazz Chisholm. Okay, you could do the same thing with Schreiber as you did with Sam Long. Let's send John Schreiber back out for the eighth inning, assuming he gets the the two batters he faces out in the seventh inning. He faces Aaron Judge, gets Aaron Judge out. Let's send Chris Bubich out there to get the final two outs of the eighth inning. Now who's the ninth inning guy? Do you leave Chris Bubich out there to get the final five outs of the game? Or do you turn it over to James MacArthur? That's kind of the the difficult part about handling this bullpen when it's a very niche situation. The niche situation tonight was that Brady Singer only went five innings and Lucas Ersig was not available. So there's 12 outs you have to get and against a lineup that's very top heavy. You got to worry about Torres. You got to worry about Soto. You got to worry about Judge. You got to worry about Wells. But then if you get to the bottom part of the order, although Jazz Chisholm in the top five there as well, but you get to the bottom part of the order, there's guys you can get out. You know, Dominguez out there tonight got his first hit of 2024, so it's not like he's been a game wrecker all year. Alex Verdugo has struggled, right? Cabrera has not been a, a guy in that lineup you truly fear all the time, not in the same way you do at the top half of the order. So James MacArthur is going out there tonight just to face those two batters, hopefully. It's not like Matt Quattrero handed James MacArthur the ninth inning in a one-run game at Yankee Stadium, right? He tried to squeeze two outs out of James MacArthur, and he had been really good leading up to that game. Not perfect, but good. Better than some of the options they had. I mean, John Schreiber had been put in a couple spots this year, and he blew the game, right? When Lucas Ursig blew that game on the, the Thursday night that Vinny Pasquantino got injured, John Schreiber came in, and things unraveled. John Schreiber's had moments this year in which it's unraveled, so it's not a perfect and easy option when Lucas Ersig's not available and a starter doesn't go five innings. Right? It's just not black and white. It's, it's very easy, and I found myself doing this a handful of times this year. It's not as easy as just sitting back and saying, well, that was a dumb move. We know it's a dumb move because it didn't work out, or we think it's a dumb move because it didn't work out. If it worked out tonight, we're saying how genius it was. Oh, you got four outs out of Sam Long, two out of MacArthur, three out of Bubich, and then three out of John Schreiber, all without Lucas Ersig tonight. And your starter not going six or seven. But the positive you can take away from that is that there's not going to be many opportunities in the off or the, the postseason, excuse me, assuming the Royals hang on to their 95% playoff odds, that if Singer or Waka or Lugo or Reagans goes five innings they're having to turn to James MacArthur in that spot. They will have two starters, arguably three, now that I think about it, they could turn to. They could go to Singer. They could go to Lorenzen. They could go to Marsh in a spot like that. One run game, Yankee Stadium, need two outs. You know, it's do or die right now. And I would also say, Lucas Ersig's going to be available in almost every single postseason game. And maybe you get Hunter Harvey back. But we all know where the... The, the confidence level is with Hunter Harvey. It wasn't great before the injury. So you're telling me it's going to be fantastic once he gets back. We'll have to wait and see, assuming he does get back. So tonight, 
I just, I don't feel gutted about that game, mainly because where the Royals are at in the standings right now, you know, mainly because other teams still have a long way to go in chasing them. But tonight, it just, it feels like I can defend the move. I can't defend the performance. I think there's a very unique difference in that. I understand why Matt Quattrero went to James MacArthur. Whether we like it or not, there are not an abundance of options if Lucas Ersig's not available and they still need, what would that have been? 10 more outs? Nine more outs? Whatever the case may have been. I think it was 10 more outs they were going to need. So you look at that and you say, okay, if not James MacArthur, who? If you go Schreiber, you're either asking John Schreiber to get a handful of more outs or Chris Bubich to get a handful of more outs. And then who's got the ninth inning? I mean, it's not as easy as just plug that guy in. It's going to work. I think they envision James MacArthur getting Torres out and then getting Juan Soto out. And honestly, the first three batters that MacArthur faced, it's not like it was a disaster. Because I did see this argument of why not pull James MacArthur when Wells came up. That was righty versus lefty. If McIntyre likes the matchup so much, the righty lefties are wanting to have a lefty face a lefty. Why did he not pull MacArthur in that spot? Well, the leadoff guy that faced MacArthur and Glaber Torres had an infield single. And I think Bobby Witt Jr., as great as that play was, he'd probably tell you, I got to get the throw down. Because if he does have a strike to first base and he got to his feet on that, it's an out. There's two outs and you're facing Juan Soto. He was ahead in the count on Juan Soto. Juan Soto draws walks better than anybody in all of baseball. So not wanting to leave him a cookie, I can understand it a little bit. And Aaron Judge didn't rip or scorch his single. It just was a ground ball. It's what James MacArthur wanted. It found some outfield grass. And I'm not trying to say it was the perfect outing. But I imagine in the dugout, they're going, well, do we just had MacArthur face three guys. Do we burn another reliever? Well, we still need a lot of outs to get right here in this spot? Or do we feel like he's right there? He got, you know, dinked and dunked a little bit and walked a guy who's really impossible to strike out and see if we'll play the odds. They played the odds. It didn't work out. That's baseball to a T. That is a bullpen management to a T. When you don't have your best guy out there, it's not going to be an easy choice of whoever you're going to. And that's simply what I'm saying here. I'm not trying to to come on here and defend James MacArthur for giving up four runs or, or three runs, or it was four runs, and faced four batters, right? I'm not going to excuse that. It was an awful outing. But I can understand the decision to go to him because they were saving their higher leverage guys for the final six outs. They wanted to save Bubich. They wanted to save Schreiber because Ursig couldn't go. And Daniel Lynch, I did hear a couple of people argue, well, why not Daniel Lynch in that spot to face Wells? Well, Daniel Lynch threw three innings on Saturday. We're only two uh, innings removed from that, or two games removed from that. I'm not sure if he was available, right? You got to play the who's available, who's not very carefully toward the end of the season because they're already down two arms and Hunter Harvey and Michael Lorenz, and you can't afford too many more injuries in that bullpen. And tonight, MacArthur didn't do his job, but I could understand the decision to go to MacArthur in a spot like that. We're going to take our first break of the show. When we come back, how would the Royals handle a best of three series? Let's take tonight's situation and hypothetically put it into a playoff scenario how do I think Matt Quattrero would handle a game like that? That's coming up on Locked On Royals. You are tuning to Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson, and you can find me on Twitter, X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. Before we go any further, I want to give a shout out to one of our main sponsors today in FanDuel. You heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you because now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you'll need is a Google account, a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sportsbook. And if you're feeling like you're riding a high from the weekend of college football in the NFL, and you want to win some money, some baseball games this week. You'll have Seth Lugo tomorrow going against Marcus Stroman. Maybe you feel like Bobby Wood Jr. is due for a hit, or maybe you do feel like Salvador Perez is red hot after his four-hit game. Maybe you have the over on the hit total tomorrow when the Royals face Marcus Stroman and the New York Yankees in game two of that series in the Bronx. So let's keep things rolling here about the bullpen. I told you beforehand, before we really dove into any segment today, 
It was going to be about the bullpen, the decisions from tonight's game, looking ahead to the future. And we're kind of on that segment now of looking ahead to the future. The Royals would not handle a playoff game like they did tonight. I have full confidence in that. If the Royals went to Yankee Stadium here in a couple of weeks in a best of three wildcard series, and this is game one, and remember all three games of this series or that series will be played at Yankee Stadium. It'll be wherever the higher seed is, they'll get all three games, assuming there is three games in that series. I have full confidence the Royals would not manage the game like they did tonight. You have to keep in mind with a regular season game and a regular season series, and especially where the Royals are at right now, they all but have a playoff spot secure. It's not confirmed yet. It's not uh, you know written in stone, nothing like that. But their playoff odds are well over 90%. If the Royals' playoff odds were at 50% tonight, they might handle it like a playoff game. And that's going to rub some people the wrong way, but let me explain myself on this. The best chance the Royals have of making a deep run in October, of course, is their starting rotation being their strength. If Cole Reagans and Lugo can go six or seven innings in game one or game two, and you're only relying on the bullpen to get nine outs or six outs for you, you're feeling pretty good about it. But a part of that rotation doing its job is also knowing the bullpen has to be fresh. You can't run guys into the ground in the hopes of gaining ground on Cleveland and catching Cleveland and having that in your sights of winning this division. Of course, everybody knows winning this division is important and it's still out there. Even with the guardians winning tonight and the Royals losing, it's now back to a three and a half game deficit, but this bullpen has to be fresh. There's not a lot of guys in this bullpen you can trust to get outs. So yes, even tonight in a 4-3 to three game, the Royals had an opportunity to run Sam Long into the ground. Have Sam Long throw 35 pitches tonight. Okay, Sam Long can't pitch Saturday or Tuesday and Wednesday. They could have gone to Lucas Ersic tonight. Well, if he pitches three straight days, he's probably not pitching tomorrow. He's probably not pitching the day after that. So that's the battle you have when you only have, let's say, two or three trustworthy arms out there. You want to make sure Chris Bubich is fresh. You want to make sure Ersig's fresh. You want to hope that Hunter Harvey comes back and can be some form of an option. You want to make sure Sam Long you can go to in spots in the postseason. But what will help the Royals in a best of three is that you take three guys that have been starting games this year and move them to the bullpen. Brady Singer will be in the bullpen. Alec Marsh will be in the bullpen. Michael Lorenzen will be in the bullpen. So for this hypothetical, when I'm painting this picture, the Royals play the Yankees at Yankee Stadium here in a few weeks. They're up four to three with one out in the top of the seventh inning. They could go to Lucas Ersig in that spot. They would still need to find somebody to get three outs in the ninth because I'd imagine they want to leave him in for the second and third out of the seventh and all of the eighth inning. They could go that route. They're not going to do that in tonight's game because they've thrown him back-to-back -back days. They want to make sure they can do that with Lucas Ersig in the postseason. So my point about Sam Long, and I got some pushback of why are we managing like we may or may not have a lead later on in this series? Well, it's about that, yes. It's also about making sure these guys are 100% in October. If you run Sam Long into the ground for 35 pitches and then he doesn't throw over four days and he comes back after the fourth day and he's rusty because he hasn't thrown in four days, that's one of your better bullpen arms right here. Chris Bubich, same thing. He threw yesterday and the Royals have been notorious this year of not sending Chris Bubich out there back-to-back -back days when recovering from Tommy John. I'm not saying I completely agree with it. It's just what they've done. So it's in my mind when I'm going over bullpen options in every single game. So in a best of three, You've got that scenario. Let's say Sam Long's at 22 pitches, and here comes Glaber Torres, here comes Juan Soto, here comes Aaron Judge. The Royals would have the luxury in game one to go, okay, we're going to go with Brady Singer in this spot. We feel like Brady Singer is our best option to get two more outs here. And yeah, it's weird because he's not a short inning guy. He's not going to go get two-thirds of an inning here in the, the final weeks of September. He's going to be starting games for the Royals. But you throw your best guys out there in some of those biggest spots, and it wouldn't shock me if Brady Singer's thrown out there or Alec Marsh is thrown out there or Michael Lorenzen's thrown out there, certainly ahead of James MacArthur. And that's why I'm just not losing sleep over tonight's decision to go to James MacArthur because in October, I don't envision a scenario in which MacArthur's coming in in a spot like that. 
I think James MacArthur would get the spot that Chris Stratton got tonight. So it does change in October. And you do want these guys to be fresh. But a part of, of tonight's decisions is coming down to how do you make sure your bullpen is fresh for October? Yes, winning tonight would have been phenomenal. Right? You you keep pace with Cleveland. You're still two and a half back. You would have a game gained on Minnesota because I believe when I began, you know, this, this podcast episode, Minnesota had lost to the Angels. So they're dealing with struggles of their own. So I can double check this. Yes, they lost tonight home. So they would have gained a game on Minnesota, been three and a half up with 17 games to go. But again, the Royals are in a good situation right now for a postseason berth. And they're not making any sort of deep run if they run whatever they have left in this bullpen into the ground. They run what they have left in this bullpen into the ground. They're asking the starters to go eight innings. And then you hope Lucas Erso is available every single night to get the final three outs. And that's just unrealistic, unfortunately. But tonight, that was trying to manage when you don't have your best bullpen arm out there. Yes, it would have been very fortunate to get six innings out of Brady Singer. But Brady Singer's also got to be fresh come October. So when you've got this cushion, it's not managing like you are waving the white flag or not caring, but you have to be smart about the position you're in. They wanted to squeeze a couple of outs from guys that aren't always going to be pitching in the highest leverage spots. In a perfect world, you could squeeze an extra inning out of Brady Singer. You could go to Sam Long for the seventh. You could go to John Shriver for the eighth. You could go to Lucas Ersig for the ninth. That's a perfect world, but you can't have that perfect world if some of those guys are worn down. So tonight, they didn't want to run Sam Long into the ground, and they wanted to save Schreiber for the ninth, and they wanted to maybe save Bubich for the eighth. They wanted to get two outs from James MacArthur. He didn't get it done. That's on him. That's a bad outing for James MacArthur. But the decisions, to me, made sense tonight. I could see the vision for it, and when I look at a playoff series, I'm just not losing sleep when I know James MacArthur is not going to be in a scenario like that. I don't think they need to demote him. I don't think they need to cut him. I think the Royals still have a lot of belief in James MacArthur because of what he was able to do leading up to tonight's game. You, you could be frustrated with the, he's been really effective of late, but that is the reality. He was a better option in that spot than John Schreiber. And if you didn't want MacArthur in that spot, he would have had to throw eventually because the Royals needed 12 outs from their bullpen. They couldn't get it done. They had been really good in the Minnesota series. Not good tonight in game one against New York. We'll see what they'll look like in games two and games three. Okay, before we move on to our final segment, I want to thank you for making Locked On Royals your first listen today. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On MLB podcast. As host Pat Sullivan, a.k.a. Sully, is here daily to provide national expertise with his trademark humor to help you get ready for the MLB playoffs here in the dog days of summer. Prepare for the Fall Classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day on Locked On MLB, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, Every day. When we come back, I'm going to tell you why I don't believe there's many big league options down in Omaha that are waiting to come up to help them in a playoff push. That's coming up on Locked On Royals. You are tuning to Locked On Royals and the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson, and you can find me on Twitter or X at Johnny J underscore 15. Our last sponsor we want to give a shout out to is eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible, item, eligible items only. Exclusions apply. An eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. So go get started today with eBay Motors. Well, tonight felt like uh, one of those typical Royals Twitter blowups about a, a bullpen arm that didn't do his job. Believe me, we, we've been here since April. Uh, this has been a, a regular occurrence going back to April. And I think fans have every right to be upset with how some of the bullpen guys have performed. And in big games, sometimes those bad outings have turned into avalanches, just run after run after run. And when you have an outing like that, when there is a blow up, I think sometimes the immediate response is, well, get rid of this guy. He's terrible. Send him down to Omaha. He clearly can't be up here at the big league level. 
and we just assume at times because guys have good numbers in AAA, that's going to translate to the big league level. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But I will tell you this with 100% confidence. The people in this organization evaluate those guys a lot more than we do. They evaluate those guys more so than the box scores. They know who can pitch at the big league level. They know who cannot, at least right now. There have been misses in the past. I mean, hell, a guy that, you know, got out of a jam tonight for the Yankees and Luke Weaver, the Royals had him, and they clearly didn't see this in him. Otherwise, they would have kept him around. They've had those slip-ups before, right? But there's not always that easy correlation from good numbers in AAA and they're going to match everything up at the big league level. These are big league hitters they're facing, and there's the added pressure. If the Royals were out of a playoff spot, sure, go crazy. Send James MacArthur down and bring up somebody like Evan Sisk or bring up Steven Cruz again. All of those things could make sense, but this is a playoff push, right? And James MacArthur, whether you want to hear it or not, is a better option than what they have down in AAA. There can be great numbers, and I'm sure there will be people commenting, hey, what about this guy? I've seen this guy pitch. He could he could definitely help out this bullpen. And I'm not saying it's impossible. But I look at situations. I look at high leverage spots. And I look at who's going to get those spots. And it's a big reason as to why I don't really mind Chris Stratton being on this team. I don't really mind Will Smith when he comes back being in this bullpen. Now, if it was to move somebody out that was pitching in a high leverage spot, I'm not okay with it. So here's my reasoning on it. Chris Stratton throws when the game is maybe not completely out of hand, but when the game is pretty bleak. Like, in my opinion, I know hindsight's twenty twenty. The game was lost for the Royals when MacArthur gave up the three-run bomb. They were not in a good spot when Chris Stratton came into the game at 7-4. to four. Yeah, they could overcome a three-run deficit, and the Yankees have had struggles with their bullpen this year. But they also don't want to burn somebody in that spot that maybe they go out there and struggle. Let's say John Shriver goes in there to keep a three-run deficit close, and he implodes, and he gives up two runs, and he throws 30 pitches. Okay, well, Shriver's not pitching tomorrow. The reason you go to Stratton in that spot is whether he pitches well or not, you're hoping to not use him tomorrow or the game after that. I mean, this was his first outing in six days. So, yeah, I, I don't mind Chris Stratton being there in that spot. Postseason roster? No. And I don't think he's going to be on the postseason roster. I made the the point of why well, I think when Lorenzen comes back, they'll uh, remove Chris Stratton from this roster. But my good buddy Joel Penfield, he does great work uh, with Josh Kaiser and Jordan Foote on One Royal Way for the KC Sports Network. You know, he brought it to me. I think they'll just leave him on the postseason roster. He'll be on this team toward the end of the year. There's only 17 games left, and he'll only be pitching in low leverage spots. So does it matter if he gets those low leverage spots or Steven Cruz does? No, not really. As for James MacArthur, when the playoffs come around, James MacArthur is not going to be pitching in a spot like tonight. And I don't think there's somebody in Omaha that you could call up that would do better. Right? Angel Serpa is not going to do better than James MacArthur. He's also a lefty. Will Smith, no. As I brought up in our second segment, they would rather go to probably Alec Marsh in a spot like that. Or in a playoff scenario, they'll go to Schreiber or they'll go to Lucas Ursic. Tonight was it basically a situation in which their starter didn't work deep and Ursig wasn't available. It feels like in October, that will be a very rare occurrence. Not so much on the starter not going deep in the game because there may be some, some times in the postseason where the Royals only get four and two-thirds or four innings out of a starter and they got to go to somebody else. But I would say Lucas Ursig in almost every single one of those games will be available because it's the postseason because you're not worrying about keeping guys fresh for the postseason, you're in it right now. And it's do or die at that point. So tonight, I again, this has been a, a reoccurring thing that I've said. I understand the process. I will not defend the production. I think everybody has a right to be mad at James MacArthur tonight. It's also baseball. It's a one-run game. As I've said multiple times on this show before, if you are banking on this bullpen, protecting a one-run lead for 12 outs, you just don't know this bullpen that well. They'll have their nights. They'll have their streaks. That's not a favorable spot for them. That's not a favorable spot for James MacArthur. He simply didn't get it done. But I think you can sleep easier tonight knowing that's not going to be an every-game occurrence. If, James Mac if there is a, a situation like this tomorrow night, for that matter, 
I don't see James MacArthur throwing in that spot. I think it'll be Shriver. I think it could be Lucas Ersig. Tonight, they tried to squeeze a couple of outs out of him. It didn't work out. And and maybe at times, and I know for a fact, because a couple of my buddies have been annoyed by me doing this before. I know at times I stay almost too level-headed and I don't get mad enough about certain things. But right now, this team is still in a very comfortable position. And if tonight the Royals needed to win to stay in the playoff hunt, to gain on Cleveland or gain on Minnesota, I'd be feeling differently. I probably would blow a gasket a little bit about going to MacArthur in that spot. But I've been told by many people in baseball before, there are just people in this sport that analyze the game, that this is all they do. They analyze situations like this. And what I was told very early on in McElchero being hired in Kansas City was that his strongest attribute is how much he prepares and analyzes for situations that may or may not happen in the game. And it's always, you know, a a collective effort. We think with the manager, it's just an end-all, be-all. He makes a decision. There's probably a coaching staff effort of, okay, if this guy gets out here or this guy gets out here, who are we going with here with who we have available? They know who's available. We do not. Therefore, I like to wait and see who actually goes out there, whether it works out or not, to know why decisions were made. tonight. I can very clearly see why certain decisions were made. It didn't work out, but it's easy for us, hindsight 2020, to go, that move was dumb because that guy got lit up. I think the only argument you could make was MacArthur should have been pulled after Judge's game-tying RBI single because it was lefty on lefty, and Jazz Chisholm was coming up after that, and Carlos Hernandez goes into the game, and you're kind of just trying to save face at that point. You're not trying to get blown out after a catastrophic inning. But... You're also trying to save some of the ammo that you have for the last two innings. Let's say MacArthur gets a double play ball with Austin Wells. Well, now you still got your lefties available for the eighth inning and the ninth inning and Chris Bubich and maybe if you go with Daniel Lynch. And you still want to have some bullets in the chamber for Tuesday's game and Wednesday's game. There's a lot of different things that factor in in making bullpen decisions. And tonight, it didn't work out. But I could see why that decision was made to go to MacArthur. MacArthur? Just simply put, has to be better than that. That's going to do it for another edition of Locked On Royals and the Locked On Podcast Network. I've been your host, Jack Johnson. Thank you for making Locked On Royals your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On MLB podcast. Prepare for the Fall Classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day. You can find the link to Locked On MLB in the description so you don't need to search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Tomorrow, we're going to have a breakdown of Tuesday night's game and maybe a little bit more of discussion into this bullpen, but I also want to analyze some of the guys in this lineup that will have to show out come October. But until then, you take it easy, Kansas City.